It really does save time. But it's not enough that we can retrieve the scriptures and tie them together so quickly because of a key word. We must apply it. Amen? And so if we're not experiencing a cheerfulness in our life, then we have need of patience. If everything's going smoothly for you and you're happy, but when everything's not going smoothly and you're not happy, then you have need of patience. We need to come to the place where we can be cheerful no matter what we're going through. No matter what trial we find ourselves in. That we have a cheerfulness. What does that mean? Does that mean that we have a giddy joy? A giddiness about us? Just empty laughter like the world has? No. Cheerfulness from the scripture has to do with strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Has to do with keeping a right attitude. Amen? A right attitude. Having a right motive. Having a right attitude. Keeping our attitude right. And if our attitude is right, then our alt, we'll, we'll get altitude. Because attitude brings... A good attitude will give us altitude. We need to keep our attitude in check. And how do we do that? We need to let patience have its perfect work in our lives so that we may be entire, complete, Wanting nothing. This is a virtue. You've heard the term. It's not a scripture in the Bible. But you've heard the term. That patience is a virtue. And if we're going to possess this virtue. If we're going to have the virtue of patience in our life. Then it's going to come by the way of tribulation. So what makes the difference between those that go through tribulation are not cheerful and those that go through tribulation are cheerful is that those that are going through tribulations and are cheerful are those that are allowing Jesus to work his virtue, his life, his nature, his joy, his peace, his very essence into their life. There's an exchange that's going on. We're exchanging our sorrow, our sadness, our unbelief, our doubt, our worries, our fears, casting all our care upon the Lord, and He's exchanging with us for our sadness, for our sorrow, for our unbelief, for our doubts, for our fears. He's replacing it with what? His nature. Joy, peace, faith. There's an exchange. There's an exchange going on here. And it's not that God is getting the short end of the stick. Because no matter how much God gives out, He never, it never depletes. There's never a diminishing of God's goodness. There's never a diminishing. God never diminishes as he gives out. In fact, there's an increase. There's a multiplication. Now in this world, when we give out, there's a diminishing from where we're giving out. But in God's kingdom, when there's a giving from God's kingdom, there's not a diminishing. It never diminishes. 
So don't be concerned that God is getting the short end of the stick. We have sang the song, I gave up my old tattered garment for a robe of pure white. It's not that God is going to somehow wear your tattered garment. All those things are consumed. Our God is a consuming fire and all carnality and flesh and all that l empty, uh, low life, low plane, everything from that lowness that came from the fall is consumed in his presence. In exchange, you receive his goodness. You receive his mercy. You receive his joy. You receive his peace. You receive his righteousness. You receive from God his best. But you have to come to the realization that your best will give you a place in hell. That your best is fit for the, the kingdom of hell. Really, not even a kingdom, because hell is not a kingdom. The pits of darkness, the pit of hell, that's what, your, that's what your best can get you. And that's why we must exchange our best filthy garments for his best. But if you have the attitude that you're rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing, then you're not making the exchange because you think what you have is already good enough. And Jesus said to those that thought they were rich, He says, You're poor. He says, You're blind, you're miserable, you're naked. And what did he say? He said, buy of me gold tried in the fire that you might be rich. The trying of our faith works patience. Patience has to do with character. A cheerfulness, even in the hardest trials, that is what it is to shine. That is what it is to be a testimony of Jesus Christ. We have need of patience. Our greatest need of the hour is patience. The greatest need for the world around us is salvation through Jesus Christ. But the greatest need for the believer is patience. Patience. I hope this helps you as it's helped me.